Hey everyone, so I have finally seen Trece and its entire season in English dub. So, um, I did a reaction a few weeks ago uh, about the Trece trailer, and back then I thought that I was, um, I find it very interesting, and I was very excited to see just Filipino stuff being animated and being streamed by a very popular streaming platform like Netflix. And all I can say is after seeing, after binge watching the entire season, um, it blew away my expectations. But it doesn't mean that it's the greatest thing that ever happened to mankind, right? I think you cannot compare this. I mean, since Netflix is treating this as an anime, let's be let's be honest here. It's not an anime. I think anime is something that will be made by Japanese animators, by a Japanese studio, and by a Japanese um, creator, and from a Japanese um, narrative, Japanese writer, something like that, because. I, I think the the Japanese people has a way of telling stories and that that um and that I think is why um it's a huge part of the anime DNA. Trece, you know, Netflix is just marketing this Trece show as an anime because they just wanted to say that they have a huge library of anime in their streaming platforms because, you know, one of their targeted audiences is the is the anime fans is the anime audience so let's try to treat this as an anime just to be you know just to be in line with what netflix sees this show you cannot compare this to an attack on titan or or um or any other big anime names out there but it is entertaining. I did um, had a blast watching it. I think the animation is really good. Um, every time um, when there is an action scene happening, I'm always looking at my brother, looking so astonished. And him, him, um, his reaction is just simply. He has a poker face reaction because he has seen way more anime than me. So I think at the same time while he's watching this, he's also comparing it to the other anime shows that he has been watching. But for me, as a regular anime fan who actually hasn't watched a ton of anime, I think the animation is really good given that it is a Netflix show. It is not from a Japanese animation studio or something. This is from Base Entertainment, and which I think is a South Korean animation studio. And yeah, the animation is good. I think they did a very, very good job of um, showing what the Philippines feels and looks like in, in animation form. I really love the art styles, especially those um, those painted pictures of the city skyline of Manila, and you know those painted uh, pictures of like the just the streets of Manila, the the Esquinitas. And uh, when it comes to the characters, I think um, not one of the characters. The um, sorry, I'm having some brain farts, but I like every single characters here. Um, uh, even the villains, I think they were done very well. And I think the highlight of the show is well, I think the highlight is of course the the hero itself, um, Trece, Alexandra Trece, but I also like the the two bodyguards. Of hers, which is Crispin and Basilio, which is a nod to those 
brothers from Dr. Serizal's No Limit Tangere. And I wanted to be clear here, I haven't read the comic books. This is my first actual exposure to the Trece, um, to the Trece universe. And I'm not a huge Filipino folklore fan, follower, or something like that. I just grew up hearing those stories. Those stories of uh, Nuno Sapunso, those stories of a Tikbala, of a Capre, of white ladies. Because it's just something that, you know, growing up as a Filipino, it's just something that you will just hear stories um, every time. Especially when, you know, you're out with your friends or your cousins and you guys want to talk about ghost stories. So the thing about folklore is that in, I'm not sure about other countries, but in Filipino folklore, each of the Filip each of the folklore creatures is something that is very, I think, haunted or something. It's just that whenever you talk about Filipino folklore, it's something that you talk about to scare people. Here, um, it's not a uh, it's not a scary show. It's it just have some horror elements on it. And I just love the fact how but um, Budget Tan, the creator of Trece, I just love the fact that Budget how Budget Tan incorporated the Filipino folklore in in modern you know in modern present times. It kind of gives me a huge The Wolf Among Us vibe from 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 the universe itself. And if you guys don't know what The Wolf Among Us is, it's it's also a comic book series which also became a video game. And I only played the video game. And it's just about um, the big bad wolf from the three little pigs becoming a detective. And he he's the detective of the of the fairy tales and stuff. So like how The Wolf Among Us incorporated the fairy tale i think the european and the american fairy tales into the modern world this is trece for the for for the philippines and um i just think that um six episodes is just not enough i think we should have more more than six episodes if not if we can only do six episodes maybe have a longer run time because because the um, because the runtime here is around twenty to thirty minutes, which is not enough, especially how deep I think the the lore is for the Tracy universe. I mean, I got lost several times while watching the show, and this is coming from a Filipino background who already have some basic knowledge about the about these folklore creatures now imagine a, f uh, a non-filipino watching this and not only they have to keep up with the with the creatures but also they have to keep up with what's happening with the story right so it's also giving me some um um there was uh, there was this show um at disney back then which shared the same universe with Totally Spice. And I think it's Martin's Mystery or something where there is this guy, this blondie guy with his sister and a caveman. It's like a trio and they also do some investigative stuff with some mysteries and something like that. So basically, Trece is, is like that. It's It's mostly a mystery show. Uh, a mystery in a detective show and you really need to think there's a lot of thinking just um, while watching the show you wanted to know who did this stuff you wanted to know who you know those kinds of stuff however my problem with it is that even though it's a detective show even though it's a mystery show there's not a lot of detective work that is happening now, I am not going to spoil the story, of course, 
but I just wanted to say that everything was so convenient when it comes to solving the, the mystery, solving the crime. And while Alexandra Trece is there to solve the crime, she also has a companion who would just tell her, uh, who would just give her the answers to the mystery. And yeah, I think that is just very convenient. I don't know if that is the same thing in the comic books. But yeah, I just don't like the fact that it's a detective show. But also it's not because after giving us the questions, this companion character is also giving us the answer at the same time. So uh, I just don't like the fact that that um, that's how the story went. So each episode has some cases, right? I think in each episode, we usually get two cases of mysteries to solve. And my problem with that is that I think the highlight, one of the highlights of the show too, is the cases. Uh, each cases are unique, but the problem is, you know, just like I said, they got solved easily. And then after the, the first case being solved, then we'll, we will get another case. But it is a branching story here. All of the cases happens for a reason, which was explained on the last few episodes of Trece. And I think um, one of my... I think the I like episodes one to four, and I think everything went downwards on episode five, especially six. If you've watched this show, uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. I think six has just um, a ton of exposition, and yeah, let, let's talk about the the exposition part two. Um, it kind of makes sense that we are getting expositions here, um, especially on the last part and also some exposition on the first episode. But the thing is, I am more of a pers I am more of a show person than a tell person. I wanted the show to show us um, um, the the story itself instead of one character explaining the backstory of everything. And that's why I think um, the last episode is my least favorite because there's just a lot of that. And it really takes away from, from, the, from the best parts of the show. And also... Um, uh, I think the... Man, I, I, it's, it's really hard to, t to talk about um, a show without spoiling anything. So I'm just going to leave, uh, live with that. Again, um, I like the characters. And I like how um, Budget Tan incorporated, you know, the Philippine mythology, the folklore into the, into the Trece universe, into, into the modern world. Now let's talk about... Um, the, the voice acting. <clears throat> so just like I said, I think I said it earlier, but I've seen the entire season in the English dub. My reason being is that um, in the trailer, I find the, the English dub more appealing. Um, it sounded like... Um, it feels like um, the English, English dub was voiced by by voice actors and actresses that were better experienced. And so um, all I can say that I am very satisfied with the voice acting. It's just that I think there's like a, the show didn't know how how are they going to approach the the accents here because the main voice actor, which I think is Shay Mitchell, she has a, she has, um, 
even though she, I think she's half Filipino, she has a uh, an a Western accent, an American or a Canadian accent. While the the other supporting characters have a Filipino English accent, and sometimes some Mexican accent there, which I find really weird from time to time because if they are going to incorporate Filipino English accent, then how come um, when they um, speak lines that are in Tagalog, that are in Filipino, it sounded like it's also their first time saying it, right? It's like um, instead of saying... Um, um, pre pretend that I'm Trece. I'm the voice actress of Trece. Um, and I speak, I speak um, an American English accent, right? And all of these characters around me are speaking in Filipino English accent. And now it's my turn to to speak uh, uh, a Tagalog phrase or a Tagalog word instead of me um, talking like. Kumustaka, like, like the like the Tagalog accent of Kumustaka, you will hear Trese saying Kumustaka, or <laughs> I I can't do the the American Tagalog accent. Uh, the I hope you guys get my point. It's just really hard to explain, but the accents are just super mixed. And they, I think they just don't know how they're going to approach it. Um, I think the, the best way to approach this is that they should have uh, maybe hired, for the English dub, hired every native Tagalog speakers and make them talk uh, and speak in English so that everybody has uh, an equal playing field, right? And not this um, English-speaking people pretending and trying to talk in Tagalog with a Tagalog accent. But overall, it's very good. I kind of like um, Shay Mitchell's um, Shay, um, Shay Mitchell's voice as Trese. Uh, whenever I see the Trese character, I can hear her voice, and I think she did a very good job um, showing the character through her voice. Now let's talk about the Tagalog dub. I've been very critical about uh, Lisa Soberano's voice acting in the trailers. And in my trailer reaction, I said that she sounded very monotone. She sounded very flat. And oh boy, I'm I'm just really disappointed to say this that she still sounded very monotone and flat in the you know in the dub itself, in the show itself. And I watched some I didn't watch the entire season in Tagalog dub, but I've watched some episodes and in Tagalog and you know, just to get that native feeling, that authentic feeling feeling from the show itself especially when it took place in the Philippines yeah uh, I in all of Lisa Soberano's work I think this is her weakest work and I just really hope that if we do get a second season I hope that she'll she'll have a better voice performance and I hope she also gets a better like a voice director um, because she really sounds flat um, in the show and I, I wish nothing but the best for Lisa Soberano because I think she's a very good actress when she's acting but when it, when it comes to voice acting um, so far uh, it's not for her Um, I think it's the same thing that the same thing can be said on some of the Tagalog voice actors here, but yeah, that's all I can say about the Tagalog dub. 
Um, I'm disappointed with the Tagalog dub. But um, I think the, the English dub is passable. Passable and since, you know, I, I like it. So, um, my only fear about this show is that even though how good the marketing is, especially in the Philippines right now, the marketing is, is wild. They have this um, 13 billboards plastered around EDSA and them being vandalized by by Aswangs. And uh, even having the, the a just recently having the ABS-CBN headquarters um, building logo being changed with the ABS ZNN logo, which is like you know, because ABS ZNN ABS even showed up in the show, but instead of ABS uh, CBN, we got ABS ZNN, you know, just to maybe um, fight off copyright reasons or something like that. I don't know how the world works, but yeah. So I just hope that, I mean, just like I said, I like the characters. And I think, oh, I haven't talked about the story yet. So, um, yeah, just like I said, the the story is, you can get lost in the story. I think the story is not the, the best thing in the world. If I'm going to watch it for a reason, I'm, as a Filipino, I'm going to watch it, I'm go. I'm going to watch it because it's Filipino content in animated form. And I've been wanting to see that for my entire life. And uh, I'm also going to watch it for the for the mystery, for the cases, and I'm also go also going to watch it for the for the creatures themselves. But for the story, um, I guess not. No. I think they build um, they built a good foundation of how the world works um, in this Trece universe. It's just that I, f I feel like the Trece um, should have been told better. Which I think is going to work if we get more episodes or maybe a longer run time of the show. But yeah, I think that the story is just okay-ish. And if you are not Filipino, I think the only reason that I can give to you um, why you should watch Trece is that at least it's entertaining. I had a good time watching it and it's just really a breath of fresh air because, you know, all of the animated stuff that we've been watching for most of our lives is either... Japanese animation or Western animation. And um, from time to, from time to time we get um, an animation that tells stories from Europe or stories from space, from fantasy worlds. Seeing an, a, seeing an animation that tells stories from the Philippines, it's a breath of fresh air because it's really going it's going to expose you to a ton of new things here. I think if you're non Filipino, you will just see this show oozes Filipino content. There's just so many um Filipino um elements on it that it feels different compared to the other animations that we've been watching for the longest time. So, um, yeah, um, my only biggest fear about this show is that it will be, a season two will be canceled by Netflix. Because, you know, we know Netflix. Netflix is a business. And with businesses, if something didn't work for them, then they're going to cancel it or they're going to give it another chance. So if, 
I'm not sure about this, but there's there's a chance that a season two is going to get canceled unless people are going to watch it. But people are only going to watch it if there are good characters and if it has a good story to tell. And right now, all I can say that it has an, an okay story, not the best in the world, but it is entertaining though. So, do I think entertainment is enough for people to watch it? And the fact that it's a breath of fresh air? It's really hard to answer, you guys. But if ever we're going to get a season 2 for this one, I am... Even though the season 2 might suck in the future, I'm just really thankful because... Um, what's important to me is, because, you know, I'm Filipino, what's important to me is that, you know, exposing some Filipino content to the whole world. And, you know, this is a different kind of Asia, right? Because just like I said, whenever people talk about Asia, they think about China and Japan and maybe South Korea. They they usually never think about uh, Vietnam, uh, maybe Singapore, uh, the Philippines, um, you know, something like that. But yeah, that's my review of Trece. If I'm going to give it a score, I talked to my brother about this. My brother gave it a 6, which makes sense because he has seen more anime and more... Um, content that has a better story, a better execution. But for me, uh, I'm going to give it a 7 or an 8. Um, an 8 if the story was told better, but right now I'm just going to give it a 7. I wasn't disappointed. Just like I said, um, it blew away my expectations and it's only because I have my expectations set really low. But still, I um, I was entertained. It was a good, happy time watching binge watching the entire show for one day. And yeah, what do you guys think? Where do you guys think the show is going to next? Um, did did you guys enjoy the show? Um, do we share the same thoughts about the show? And again, thanks for watching, you guys. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the Giga Channel for more review conversations like this. And hope you guys have. A very wonderful day. And yeah, goodbye you guys. If my mouse um, get paired to my computer. But right now, oh, there we go. Goodbye.